So we want to solve this and find all those x values that satisfy this inequality. Okay, so the first thing we realize is that x cannot be equal to 1, otherwise we'd be dividing by 0 here. Okay, so what we would like to do is simplify. Simplify this inequality as much as possible, because if it's simple, then we can uh, more easily solve it. So let's call this inequality star. And one way to simplify these inequalities is to multiply both sides by, in this case, the square of x minus 1. Now, let, let's go through and do that and see if we simplify. So x minus 1 all squared to obtain, okay, well, we're going to get x minus 1 all squared up the top, and x minus 1 all squared here. Now, why did I multiply by x minus 1 all squared? Why not just x minus 1? Well, because x is not equal to 1, this must be positive. So if I multiply any inequality, both sides, by a positive number, I can keep the same inequality sign. Okay? If I didn't have a square here, then I'd have to worry about, well, when is x minus 1 positive and when is it negative? So if you have a square, then you can multiply both sides and keep the same inequality. Okay, so we can see here that we're going to get some cancellation. And let's rearrange, bring all the x's to the other side. And we'll get something a little like this. All right, now you can see here that we have a common factor of x minus 1. So we can take this out and again simplify. Okay, so I'm going to bring a common factor of x minus 1 out the front, and I'll get something like this. Now, I can clean up what's in this bracket here just by expanding. I'm going to get a half plus a half, uh, sorry, 1 plus a half x minus a half, which is uh, the following. So I'm going to get a half x, 1 minus a half is plus 1 half. All right, again, we've got a common factor of a half, so I can take both those out. Okay, so taking the half out the front, I get this. All right, this is about as simple as, as we're going to get here. Now... We factorized nicely. We've got all the x's on one side of our inequality. You can solve this algebraically if you want to, but I, I'm pretty simple, so I like to sketch the graph here and see where the graph lies above the x-axis. Okay, so let's do that, and um, then we can determine what values of x satisfy this inequality, and, and those values of x will, of course, satisfy our original star inequality. Okay, so, so I'm going to sketch this function here. Notice I've left off the half. The half doesn't change the problem at all, because when this is positive, this will be positive. Okay, so this is just a parabola, and in particular it's a parabola that's u-shaped, and it's going to cut the axes at positive 1 and negative 1. So here's a quick sketch of our function g. 
Now all we need to do, we want to know where, for what x values is this g positive? So where does it lie above the x-axis? Well, it's here and it's here and the x points corresponding to those points are here. Okay, so let's write down what those x points are. From the graph, we see that g of x is greater than the zero, is positive, when x is strictly greater than one, or when x is strictly less than minus one. Okay, so these values of x sat, uh, make g positive, and in turn, we know that this will be satisfied and our original star inequality will be satisfied. Okay, so these are the points that we're interested in. So let's make a conclusion. Our original inequality holds for those x points which are greater than 1 or those x points that are minus 1. And if you want to write that in interval notation, I would write it like this. Okay.